Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem, meaning the name of Yahweh Shai, being the name of Yahweh's only begotten Son and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem Rakakwadash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honor to the elders and apostles, a great millstone, and shalom to the hopeful elect that scatter abroad to the four corners of the earth, which are you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, and shalom to you speckled birds, and you Israelite foreigners that scatter out in the other nations that look like the other nations, but are, in fact, Israelites. And the title of this lesson is, Don't Get Sifted, all right? And, you know, the Spirit had me to go into this lesson you know, because here lately, you know, I've been noticing a lot of sifting going on. All right. You know, whether it be people that were once following sound doctrine, you know, now they're following after wayward, bugged out doctrines. All right. Or people that are just simply, you know, getting faint hearted, you know, losing faith, you know, contemplating on going back in the world. All right. You know, you don't want to be that guy, especially in the times that we are in right now. All right. You know, major end time prophecies are coming to pass right before our eyes, right? You know, so, you know, you will be a real, you know, idiot, if I got to say so, to even think about going back into the world, right? Because think about it, from this truth, all right, that's going to lead us to everlasting life, all right? To, to what, all right? Back to the world, you know, being a damn nigga, all right? You know, what? You know, what is out there in the world? You know, nothing, all right? This truth is ultimately all we got, all right? You know, and it's going to lead us to everlasting life, you know, paradise, so on and so forth, all right? You know, so, hey, you know, we in a time where, hey, you got to stand firm, all right? Endure hardness like a soldier, as the scriptures say, you know, because, you know, a lot of guys come into this truth, you know, they endure for a moment, then, you know, they get faint hearted, all right? You know, and the scriptures talk about that, you know, the parable of the sower, all right? You have people that come into this truth for a minute, you know, they endure for a while, you know, then affliction comes up. Now they're getting weak and faint hearted, all right? You know, but the scriptures tell you that those that endure to the end, those are the ones going to be saved, all right? You know, so if you're being faint hearted, you know, contemplating on going back into the world because of, you know, different trials and tribulations that may come upon you, hey, you're through, all right? You're through. You know what I'm saying? You know, so through the spirit, you know, I want to make a quick lesson on this for whoever needs to hear it. All right. You know, it's time to gird up your loins like a man, as the scriptures tell you. All right. Because weak men are going to get sifted out in these last days. So to begin with, I want to get Luke chapter 22. All right. Because back then, you know, uh, Satan, you know, he's trying to sift out Peter. All right. You know, so it's going to be the same way in the times that we're in right now. All right. You know, Satan, you know, is going up and down the earth, seeking whom he may devour. All right. So let's get it. Let's get uh, Luke. Chapter 22. Salaki. Let's start at verse 31. And it says... And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. All right. You know, so back then you had, you know, Satan trying to sift out Peter. All right. So how much more of us in the times that we're in right now? All right. The closer that we're getting to it, getting, getting to the end. All right. Satan is going up and down the earth, you know, seeking whom he may devour. All right you know so you know it's important to make sure that you know you're you're keeping the faith you're enduring all right because you know if you get if you if you faint in the day of adversity and hey, you're through all right because we haven't seen anything yet you know we on the brink of jacob's trouble and you have men that's getting faint-hearted by the trials and tribulations that they're dealing with in their day-to-day -day life all right if you cannot deal with what you're go dealing with right now you definitely won't make it through Jacob's trouble. And that's, that's point blank, period. All right? 
you know but like i said you know weak men are going to get sifted out all right let's get mark chapter four all right this is going to go into the parable of the sower right because you have people you know that come into this truth and they're not you know truly rooted all right you know they're not truly rooted and those that are not truly rooted in this thing eventually they're going to fall out all right so this is mark chapter 4 and let's start at verse 14 and it says the sower soweth the word verse 15 and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they have heard satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their heart all right pretty much going into how you know a lot of times you know brothers out there on the highways and byways teaching and whatnot you know you have somebody come up you know they're listening and then out of nowhere you have a demon that comes by and try to distract them all right you know they take you know that they, they take their attention away you know from the word all right this is what that's going into all right let's continue and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have re heard the word immediately receive it with gladness verse 17 and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time afterward when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake immediately they are offended all right so these people that you know they receive the word they hear the word they immediately receive it but then affliction and persecution come up you know then you know they're offended all right they want to fall off the truth now they want to go back into the world all right these people were never rooted to begin with all right you know so hey those that are not truly rooted in this thing in due time you know you're going to see them fall out all right they're going to fall out of this thing let's continue verse 18 and these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word verse 19 and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful all right because you have a lot of people you know they're so caught up in the riches and the things of this world all right you know these are those that's uh sown among thorns all right verse uh 20 and these are they which are sown on good ground such as hear the word and receive it and bringeth forth fruit some 30 fold some 60 and some and 100 all right you want to be those that are sown on good ground all right you know that's firmly rooted all right because those that are firmly rooted in this truth they're never going to fall out you know tribulation you know it's not going to make them fold under pressure all right you know but here you have it in these last days you know you have a lot of men that are getting weak-hearted and faint-hearted all right you know and this is that's not this is not the time to do that because we are clearly at the end all right and if you fall out this truth hey you know it's really better that you have never known the truth you know let's get it this is uh second peter and let's start at verse 21 and it says for it had been better for them not to have no, not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to return from the holy commandment delivered unto them all right so basically you know if you were into this truth you know then you fall out you know ultimately it's really better that you have that you have never even known all right because the scriptures tell you that uh you know uh the servant that knew the lord's will you know and didn't do it you know he gonna get more stripes than the one that didn't know all right you know roughly paraphrasing verse 22 but it but it is happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is returned to his own vomit again and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the time of mirror right you know and this is really uh quoting something that's written in proverbs let me see if i can find it proverbs chapter 26 and verse 11 and it says a dog returned to his vomit so a fool return it to his folly, all right? And that's exactly what you are. You know, if you fall out of this truth, then you go back into the world, all right? You're basically like a dog returning to his vomit, all right? You know, so it will be behoove, you know, you Israelites, all right? You Israelite men and women, all right? To stand firm in this truth, all right? Because those that who endure to the end, those that hold on to their crown, those are the ones that are gonna be saved, 
all right? Not those that are getting weak-hearted and faint-hearted, you know, in the day of adversity, all right? That's why the scriptures tell you, you know, you got to count the cost, you know, when you come into this truth, all right? Because if you don't, hey, you know, things are going to catch you off guard. Adversity is going to catch you off guard, all right? You know, then, it, you know, it's a possibility that you might bug out, fall out this truth, you know, because you didn't count the cost. And then it's going to leave you to be a laughing stock, all right? Because people are going to look at you and be like, oh, I remember back when you saw about the Hebrew Israelite stuff. Now, look at you now. You don't even believe it anymore, all right? You know, you're going to be a whole laughing stock because you weren't able to finish building your house, you know, so to speak. So this is uh, Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. And it says, for which of you intending to build a tower, sitting that down first and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. All right. So basically, you know, comparing it to this truth, when you come into this truth, you know, you have to count the cost, you know, and understand that, hey, you're going to go through things. Your faith is going to get tried. All right. Verse 29. Less happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it again, mock him. All right. You become a laughing stock to your friends that out in the world, your family, all right? They're going to remember when you're talking about that Hebrew Israelite stuff. And they're going to be like, oh, what happened? You know, you ain't, you ain't, you don't believe it anymore. Oh, you know, he's going to start laughing at you. You're going to be a laughing stock, all right? Verse 30. And it says, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish, all right? You know, you was not able to finish the race because, you know, different trials and tribulations came upon you, all right? Verse 31, or what king going to make war against another king sit not down first and consult it whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. All right. You know, so, hey, you got to count the costs when you come into this truth. All right. You know, you got to understand what you're getting involved in, because if you don't, you know, ultimately you're going to get faint hearted when adversity come upon you. All right. Let's go. Uh, Luke chapter. 17 all right you know because you got to remember lot's wife because you know what happened to her when she was uh you know Lot and his family you know was escaping out of sodom and Gomorrah. you know lot's wife looked back you know and she was turned into a pillar of salt you know and that's the example that all of us could look at today you know if we look back you know at the world you know contemplating on going back in it you know so on and so forth you know ultimately that's going to lead to your destruction this is Luke chapter 17 and verse 31. It says, In that day he which shall be upon the house top and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him not let him likewise not return. Verse 32. Remember Lot's wife. All right. She was a plain example, you know, to uh those to us today, all right? To not look back to the world, you know, because ultimately, you know, that could lead to our destruction. Verse 33, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it, all right? You know, so, hey, this is not the time to be looking back, you know, thinking about going back into the world, you know, because you're facing different adversities, you know, you're losing patience, all right? You know, let's get uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, all right? So, like, you know, let's get Proverbs chapter 24. In verse 10, it says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. All right. You know, you're weak. Right. And weak men are going to get rooted out in these last days, you know, because you really haven't even seen adversity yet. All right. Jacob's trouble is on the horizon. You know, so if you fainting, you know, getting weak, feeble knees because of what you're dealing with right now. Hey, you're through. All right. You're through. This is uh, Salakia. This is Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. All right. And it says, And Yahweh shall said unto him, No man having put his hand to, to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So you're not even fit for the kingdom. You know, if you come into this truth and you begin to look back, you know, you don't want to endure anymore. All right. You know, you didn't turn your back on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So why in the hell? Would you even be worthy for the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai? All right. Let's get uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2. All right. 
I'm going to get a few scratches from there, and I'm going to close this lesson out. So this is Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 1 and it says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right? Many trials and tribulations. So when you come into this truth, you're going to go through things. All right? You have to count the cost. You have to understand this. Verse 2, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. All right? You got to constantly endure. Whatever may come upon you, you got to endure through it. All right? Because it's there to test your faith. All right, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at that last end. All right, if you endure through it, all right, you know, you have patience, you know, you wait on the Lord, you're going to be increased at the last end. All right, Job is a great example of that. Verse 4 Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. All right, and a lot of you people, a lot of you Israelites, you're not patient. All right, you know, you're losing patience, and the scriptures tell you that woe to you that lose patience. All right. Verse five, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. All right. So, hey, these trials and tribulations which, that you're going through is the only way that you're going to be found acceptable in the eyes of your house by Shem was shy. All right. So let's jump down a couple scriptures. Verse 12. And it says, woe be to be to the slaki, woe be to the fear, fearful hearts and faint, faint hands and the sinners that go two ways. Verse 13, woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. All right. You know, so if you get faint hearted, you're not going to be defended when all hell break loose. All right. You know, you're done. You know, so, hey, that's why it's important to endure. You know, no matter what you're going through, you know, even though it may seem as if it's taking forever for your house to come back, you got to continue to have patience and endure. All right. Verse, uh, 14 i'm gonna close this lesson out and it says woe unto you that have lost patience and what will ye do when the lord shall visit you all right all right so if you lose patience in a day of adversity you know hey death and and that de death and destruction you know is on your way best believe that all right so hey the best thing that you could do is constantly endure as we just read about in Sirach chapter 2 all right weak men are going to get rooted out in these last days so with that you know lord willing this lesson was edifying and exhorting to you brothers and you sisters out there that scattered to the four corners of the earth and as always i want to give all praises honor and infinite glory to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rachakodash for giving me the spirit to do this lesson double honor to the elders and apostles a great millstone and shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity shalom